Welcome to It's Your Date with Destiny with Apostle Vivian and Pastor Gemma Duncan of Divine Destiny Worship Center in Diego Martin. For the next 30 minutes, join us as we take you on a journey of maximizing your potential and realizing your goals through Jesus Christ. Whether it's on a Sunday, Tuesday, or Friday, or any other day of the week, a warm welcome awaits you at Divine Destiny Worship Center, a place where your full potential is discovered. Here's a special invitation to join us at our sanctuary for today's... What if God puts you to sit next to someone who is going through a storm in his or her life and desperately needs Jesus? And God tells you, speak to that person. Maybe you're not accustomed to speaking to, to people on the whole about things pertaining to Jesus. But you can sense that there is a turbulence in that person's life. What are you going to do? I believe you have what it takes to say, yes, Lord, I'm going to rescue this soul for you. And right now, I want to anoint my hands and release such an anointing to bring deliverance to people who are in an area of turbulence. Their lives just keep going from one rock to another rock. They bounce their head. They hit dead-end streets. They make wrong choices. And God says, I've put you in that workplace. I've put you in that neighborhood. I've put you in that family as a kingdom citizen to bring stability in their lives. Yes, in the anointing oil, I'm going to anoint my hands right now. And I'm going to stretch forth my hands. And I declare uh, that the same anointing that's upon us, that's upon those in your ministry that win souls, is also upon you. I prophesy over you that you are like Peter, whom Jesus said to go fish with a hook and you will catch a fish that has gold in its mouth. I prophesy you are a fisherman, a fisherwoman in the kingdom to catch fish that are swirling around in turbulent waters. I proclaim the words of your mouth are powerful, impacting. Jesus said, don't worry about what you'll say. Just open your mouth. He said, I'll tell you exactly what to tell the person whom he's now leading you to. So in the name of Jesus, the soul winner's anointing to make you a champion soul winner is upon you. In the name of Jesus, put your hand on your belly and declare it. Lord, give me that soul or I die. I declare it so in the name of Jesus. Well, I'm Apostle Vivian Duncan and I'm a champion soul winner. I, I'm telling you, many souls have come to know Christ as Savior because I've thrusted in the sickle of the prophetic, the sickle of the preached word, the sickle of bringing deliverance to people. And they have never turned back on Jesus. On behalf of my wife, Apostle Gemma, she's also a champion soul winner. And all the covenanters at Divine Destiny Worship Center, the House of Champions, champion soul winners, we welcome you to this program. It's your date with destiny. Amen. This is the television arm of our media ministry. And we are going straight into our, our excerpt today. Some of what is done on, on the Monday night sessions. And it's Apostle Gemma's turn now to speak into your spirit. I'm sure you're going to get up and go win a soul. She is concentrating on the book of Acts, which represents the church as a team of Prophetic apostolic evangelists, you need to receive it. Amen. 
And while we are on the air, call our numbers. They are on the screen. And we're going to certainly contact you based on what you are asking for. Here is a passage. Why are we afraid of being rejected? Remember I told you how I feel when you talk to somebody and they really water you down? How you all feel? When you talk to somebody and they really don't know your scriptures and they mess you up? Two things that I'm doing. Tell yourself, I ain't opening my mouth again. Or you see me next year, I sign up for school of the Bible. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> and we don't want you to decide that you're not going to open your mouth because you have to talk. Amen? Fear of being embarrassed. Because some people are merciless. When they realize that you really don't know your scriptures, you should. They're merciless. But you see, that's why we need the power of the Holy Spirit. Because it's not how much you know, it's not your ability, but it's the power of the Holy Spirit that makes your word impacting. Fear that we do not know adequately enough to respond. Fear that we cannot speak or express ourselves. I can't talk like Moses. But God dealt with Moses, right? God, Moses says, I'm a stammer. No, I can't, I'm not like a person, baby, and I don't know what to stammer. Moses said, Lord, I can't talk. And God said, I'll put my words in your mouth. And I, when you read uh, through the first five books of the Bible, in many instances, you will, you will see the writer, which is Moses himself, saying, and God said. And God didn't speak. Moses spoke to the people, but he didn't say, I said. He said, God said. Because in those days, it was, I, I can't recall God speaking to the people directly. It was through Moses. But the Bible says, and God said. So as, when, as far as God was concerned, when Moses spoke, he spoke. And the, and the fact that Moses said he couldn't talk, God was talking. So when you open your mouth and you're representing God, God is talking. They might listen to you, but they will listen to the God in you. Anybody here here? Should be excited. Fear of persecution and ridicule. Uh, let me tell you. In Trinidad, we don't have a clue what persecution is. You hear what I just said? Just came from Nigeria. In the northern section of Nigeria, they're still burning churches. Like we said, now here, the next thing you see smoke coming through. And if we try to run, soldiers with guns on the step. So you could decide to stay in here and burn or go outside and get shot. And people would still go to church knowing that you could lose your life. I'm talking about Noah, today. What persecution are we talking about? People ain't like here, they're talking about here. What persecution? Anybody here get disinherited from any will yet? I'm just asking you. Your family decide they ain't giving you, but they have nothing to disinherit you from in the first place. And sometimes when they throw you out, that's the best thing they will ever do. No, there are times when they put you out, and that's the best thing. That's where your life began. You needed to get away from that environment. Don't yeah. believe me. Yeah. What persecution? All right, we go through stuff, but in terms of persecution, if we, if you understand what persecution is, somebody else punishing you. What persecution? That you're, some people do. Some family really persecute you. Some people leave the religion, and the, all the family members, they persecute you. But by far and large, the average one of us are not very persecuted for Christ. Oh, God, you see? Amen. All right, maybe I make a mistake. Then all of you persecuted. No. You want to sit down there and tell God you're being persecuted? No. Or oh, he can prove to you, yeah, yeah. No, if you tell him, well, Lord, I persecuted God, well, let me show you what persecution is. You understand what I'm trying to say? And there are people in truth who, who people really persecute. Right here, and not, I mean, in Trinidad, for, at the stand for Christ. But the vast majority of us is words, it's insult, they throw this out. You know, you know that's what I'm trying to say? That is not persecution. I'm trying to convince you all. I said that is not real persecution. We go to, on this side of the, the world, we're free to come. You weren't afraid to come here, you're not frightened to leave. Uh, we have to learn to give God thanks for the freedom that we enjoy. And hope it never, we never lose it. 
Because 1970, we were at the brink. All now so, we would understand. If Abu Bakr was successful in taking over Trinidad and Tobago, we couldn't be here. You know that. And God was merciful to us. I said, God, almighty God, because of the prayers of his people, prayers went up. And God says, no way, this country is mine. And we thank him. Some of us have shared this interest. Your time in my right? Okay. Why are we disinterested? Because perhaps we didn't teach you right. I'm taking the blame. Because we have a whole lot of people in the church who are self-absorbed. I need this Jesus. I need that God. I need that. I ain't, I ain't have a shoot of my mouth, but I ain't going to church on Sunday. Yeah. Every, we, we pray, we get an answer to this. Everything is me. And you know, you're seeing the reflection. The whole selfie age is a sign of self-absorption. Some people in church, every day you're posting a photo of yourself on, on Facebook with your outfit. Self-absorbed. annoying is I got to get out on Facebook the first time I tried to get on Facebook they insist I come on Facebook I said let me try this thing I sat down for nearly two hours hundreds popping up I want to be a friend and it's just for lying I said well let me just see people years 20 30 years 40 years I don't know I don't want to be a friend me you know you so long <laughs> it, no people just no, and I said well I just let me see how far it will go and finally I said no I can't do this Why am I going to take my time to take a photo every day to put on Facebook? What you're looking for? All right, you advertise for 2016. You get anything? <laughs> Just asking. No, I don't know. If you get something, come and tell me what you get. Stop it. Put a script on Facebook. Put a word. Say, God bless you today. May the good Lord bless and keep you. Any little thing. Ah. 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 This interest absorbed with me, I, my, mine. And Friday night, I was there. And when I left, I said, oh, bye. You know, I don't like to have a service and sometimes not pray for people's needs. Even as a general prayer. And somehow the Holy Spirit was constraining me. Let me tell you something. We have to come to a place where people will always pray for your need. Amen. You're focused on God and God takes care of your need. Amen. And I struggled not to pray. Because I knew that people came with their needs. But like Holy Ghost was saying, let them put me first. Yes. For once, let them focus on me. My needs, what I want them to do. Because when you put me first, he will take care of your needs. Disinterest. Every day I get up, what I have, what I don't have, what this one do, what they didn't do me, everything is me. Easily offended. Everything you're upset about. You're always unhappy. Oh God. Jesus. You can, you'll never be happy. Because every little thing upsets you. I tell them, somebody, I mean, the person was making a little joke. Some people were hugging me by the car. Hey, you don't hug me. You quiet down there. How about I hug you? And she was joking. But still, you never came to me. I can't hug. The, the reason why the people you see hugging me because they were right there. You have to be hugging distance with to hug you. So those who came, they wanted to be hugged by me. So they came where I could hug them. You, don't, you, you staying far from me, oh, I don't hug you. I'm happy running you down to hug you. And I don't think the person, she was joking. So she wasn't being offended. But there are some people who are really offended by it. 
She don't talk to me. Well, you don't talk to me either. And I am not vexed with you. Sometimes you even notice you wasn't talking to me. I remember I upset somebody, and for two years, the person wasn't talking to me. I didn't notice. And after two years, a pastor preached something on forgiveness, and the person came to me and said, two years ago, so and so happened. I said, well, me even notice you ain't talking to me. <laughs> no, I really didn't notice. <laughs> I didn't notice. So if you didn't tell me good morning, the truth is me even notice you ain't say good morning. And if you tell me good morning, it's not a problem. You don't have to tell me good morning. You don't determine whether my morning is good or not. Hallelujah. And we go off on all these things. And you know what happens to us? We become disinterested in souls because everything is me. What they say, what they didn't do me. Let me tell you something. You all feel like the pastor has no issues. If the pastor takes on what people do, we never come up on this pulpit. Always bite in the hand that feed them. But the Bible says, don't get weary with well-doing. And you're among this place. You pray and you counsel people. You don't like you. They don't know you know what they say about you. Because people are always coming back to talk. My mother, is, my aunt used to say, who does bring this carry? <laughs> yes. And sometimes we home and two of us discuss some things. And the next thing, the person bring, bring, they have a problem. A person could come and talk to you. You're just done bad talky tale. Okay. And pring, pring, you have a problem. And my darling husband will pray for you. That is what we do. Tell the neighbor, that is what the pastors do. <laughs> Self-absorbed. Disinterest. In other words, I can't see further than my nose. Everything is about me. And God is saying, look beyond you. Look beyond your, in your interest. All of us have issues. You think we don't have? You think Apostle and I, you, you, you don't want to hear you can't handle what we have to handle. We can't tell you the things we handle. And he comes here looking quite happy and smiling. You don't know. We don't come on this pulpit and load and tell anybody anything. You don't know. We have issues. And some of you can't carry the ones that we carry in. But God called us to do a job and you go and you do the job. He writes in Grenada and I'm writing him, uh, kind of you know, encouraging him. I say, you know what, God saying to do something. Let him fight the battles. You can't be absorbed with those things. You focus on what you have to do. I ain't Tobago. I'm focusing on what I do in Tobago. Let go deal with the issues. Yes. Telling them about all of us have issues. Yes. But God is saying, take your gaze off you. Yes. Stop your selfie. Yes. Look for souls. Raise your gaze. Jesus said, lift your eyes. Look to the harvest. The fields are ripe. Stop thinking about you and yours and what you lack and what you have, what you have. Think souls. That's the area we're in. We in and God said, I will take care of you. Look at how he took care of the disciples. Ready to pay taxes. Tell Peter, go. The first fish you catch has money in the mouth. And God will supply your need in extraordinary ways. When we take our gaze of ourselves and our issues, we all have them. Everybody you see here praising God, you don't know the story. And sometimes, listen to me, your situation better than what they face and they come in here and praising God. And sometimes people admire, oh, I wish I could be like Sister So-and-so. You don't really want to be like Sister So-and-so. Because you don't know the person's story. Hallelujah. But God is saying, change, shift your gaze. Tell anybody, shift your gaze. Raise your gaze. If we submit the Holy Spirit tonight, he can take care of both fear and disinterest. We are filled with the same Holy Spirit today. What do we need to do in this time? Yield our lives to him. Confess our sins. I think it's time that the church reach a stage where we, like David, we are willing to confess when we're wrong. Confess your sins. What did I just say? I know sins is not a word we like to hear. Confess your sins. Tell God, he knows, but confess your sins. Acknowledge your wrong. Stop playing the blame game. And when we had the launch, I talked about the difference between David and Saul. Every time Saul did wrong, he blamed somebody. Every time David did wrong, he said, I'm guilty. And the Lord said to me, 
release the Joel anointing. Joel chapter 2, verse 28. I decree the spirit of the Lord is upon you because he has anointed you like Jesus to preach the gospel. But you are preaching the gospel with the empowerment of Joel chapter 2. You are in the last days. And God said, I'll pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And my sons, my daughters shall prophesy. And upon my handmaidens, I'll pour my spirit. And they too shall prophesy. Upon all men, I'll pour my spirit and they shall dream dreams. I prophesy there is a prophetic anointing that just came upon you. Receive it right now. That's another sickle for reaping the harvest. It's called the prophetic sickle. Thrust in the sickle and reap on behalf of God. Amen, amen, amen. Well, we are coming to the end of the month of April. We just want you to know, if you keep doing what God asks you to do, God will keep blessing you and blessing you and blessing you. And right now, he says, win a soul. Put your hand on your belly right now and declare it again. Lord, give me souls or I die. We give God the praise for that. Don't forget on a Monday, we have our radio program on 98.1 at 9 p.m. It's your date with destiny. On a Tuesday, we have our program on 107.1, uh, the word, and it's living the more abundant life sponsored by Bees Ice Cream. And uh, on a Friday, we have Ask Pastor Gemma, the program that addresses questions few people dear to ask, and even fewer, dear to answer. Be listening. Amen. Uh, we give God the praise. We want you to be with us this weekend at Divine Destiny Worship Center, especially this Sunday morning. Uh, my God, God has been releasing a grace upon us for Sunday services. I'm telling you, you could never, uh, I mean, describe it to somebody else if that person wasn't in here and in the other branches. And I decree you'll come this Sunday morning and your life will never be the same again. And that's not a cliche, it's an experience. to the boulevard opposite to where Margaret and them were, opposite the police station. Okay. And we met a few people because most people were driving, as others said. And um, we ministered to one guy who was just coming from work and he was saying how he had to go home to his family. And well, we asked him about if he knew Jesus Christ as Savior. And he stood up and he listened to us quite a while. He stood there for about half an hour. Wow. Yes, and well, Jeanette was with me and she was asking him um, if he um, went, if he got into a situation tonight and the Lord took him home, hmm. where he would end up. And he said, well, I guess it's hell because he wants oh. to go. <laughs> and she asked him, um, do you want to go to heaven? He said, yes. So then, well, he stood up and he listened to um, the brother who was with us, myself and her, and we were telling him different things and he listened. I invited him to church with his family and he said he would come. Amen. And he was led into the sinner's prayer. Wow. And he accepted Jesus. Come on, give God. And I was basically quiet and we were able to pray for this lady who she asked, she was very receptive and um, an elderly lady. And um, we also invited her to come to church and Brother Guerra, well, he even walked with that. While he talking to one of the guys, he was walking. You know, you, people didn't want to stand up, so he walking, going up the road, talking to him. And when he finished, he come back. But I think what I like um, was that I saw um, um, Sister Cheryl 
there on the corner and there was this lady coming this way and I know she saw us. She had on dark shades and thing, you know? So she keep on that side of the road. So I tell him, I say, you know what? She avoiding us, but she could bounce them up. up. <laughs> and really, and I keep watching, watching, watching. And when she reach up with the corner, she up there. <laughs> so I believe that we, the strategy that we use, you know, the corners and the different sides of the road, very, very good. So if them yeah. miss them here, they catch them. Here. That's Thank fine. You. Until we meet again, I'm Apostle Vivian Duncan on behalf of my wife, Apostle Gemma, and all the covenanters at Divine Destiny Worship Center. Declaring to you, you began life as a winner, don't live it as a victim or die as a loser. You're a God idea. Because when God made you, he had destiny on his mind. Next time on Divine Destiny Worship Center's program, this program, it's your date with destiny. Well, here. When you do wrong, admit it. Not to me, but to God. Go to God and say, you know, I should not have behaved so. I should not have said that. I should not. Because you already know. Immediately when you say the wrong thing, you feel the conviction. Go and say, God, forgive me. And give me the ability to know and apologize to that person and say, you know what? I, I should not have reacted like that. You're asking a simple thing. You know, um, and don't say, oh, somebody make me upset. No. Don't use no excuse for your behavior. Say, I'm sorry for be behaving in that manner. Um, don't put no, because somebody may have upset you, but don't throw the blame on somebody else. Admit and take responsibility for your behavior. I could upset you, but I don't, I didn't force you to say what you said. Continue to reach your goals through Jesus Christ. This has been It's Your Date with Destiny, a production of Divine Destiny Media Ministry. Until next time, you began life as a winner. Don't live life as a victim or die as a loser. For when God made you, he had destiny on his mind.